All right, let's go and get started. And um, we've been talking about complex circuits, complex DC circuits, and um, they have resistances or loads that are in both series and parallel, all in the same circuit. We call this a network. network. A network is a complex circuit, both series and parallel. But important to remember as we solve networks, the differences between series and parallel. Uh, first of all, as we're looking at the network, we can identify where we see series. We can identify where we see parallel. What is what will series look like? What characterizes series arrangements? Michael? Um, they're like in a row. Or right, in a row so that the current... Travels through each one consecutively. Travels through them consecutively, where there's no other pathway for the current to go. There's only one path. Current has to flow through all of them in succession. That's series. Whereas parallel, Kendall... There are multiple pathways. So the current can go through multiple resistances at once when they're in parallel with each other. Um, one of the first things we do with any network, of course, is find the any circuit, really. We find the equivalent resistance. It's always step one, what's the equivalent resistance? And we spent the last few days working on that. Now, yesterday we delved further beyond just equivalent resistance. But the key, even with a network, is to, okay, here's series, here's parallel, series, parallel, we go back and forth. Well, how do I find equivalent resistance for series? Audrey? Um, just add them up. <laughs> what about parallel? Yeah, reciprocals. And then don't do what I did yesterday. Take the reciprocal at the end. Don't forget the reciprocal at the end. Um, for the, uh, the current, then. We said when we get to our little box, our chart on the wall, or on your paper, um, <laughs> well, not on the wall, technically it's a chalkboard, but anyway, uh, when we get to the chart, we're finding the current. We know for a series resistors, in a series circuit class, the current is constant. is constant because there's only that one pathway. So whatever current is in the circuit has to go through any simple series. So we know the current already. When it comes to the parallel, however, that's not true. What does the current do at a parallel? Um, it varies. It splits, it varies. So whatever branch of the parallel has less resistance class is going to get more of the current. But we do know something about parallel. The current may not be constant, the current may split, the current may vary, but what is consistent within the parallel? The voltage, the voltage in each branch has to be the same. Now, if there's multiple resistances in the branch, you know, in series with each other, we said that the voltage is going to vary within that series, but um, at each branch, it's the same voltage everywhere. Whereas in the series resistors, um, same amount of current, but... Within the series, sorry, we said the current stays consistent, but the... The voltage is going to vary. The more resistance, same amount of current, you're going to get more voltage there. Um, so you had for homework a network to solve last night. I said we started you off with a 12-volt battery. We had the current going through a 4-ohm resistance. And then the current split. It had a pathway with a 1-ohm resistance and a 3-ohm resistance. It had a separate pathway next to it that had a 2-ohm resistance and a 6-ohm resistance. The current then reconnected, and on its way back to the battery, it ran into one final resistance of 5 ohms. All right, so let's see how we did on that homework. She gave it old college try and then got, ah! and I did an old college try and then, uh, I say old college try, it would be new college try in a few months. Um, all right, Michael feels like he's got it. Let's take it a look here. It all hinges on this first number. You blow the first number, you blow the whole problem. Don't blow the first number. We've got to get the equivalent resistance. And, um, well, talk me through getting the equivalent resistance, Kendall. Um, you look at the series okay. resistors. Okay. Um, it's the one ohm and three ohm. And we say, let's just imagine that instead of a one and a three, it's really just a four, a four ohm resistance. And then do the same thing. And, six. and we say, let's just imagine it's really eight ohms. Eight ohms, because that's the equivalent resistance. Then what do we do? Um, those are now parallel. Good, simple parallel with each other. So you add the reciprocals. 
So a fourth plus an eighth, what is that, three eighths? And then eight, eight thirds, so what do we get? Uh, 2.6 repeating. 2.6 repeating ohms of resistance at the whole parallel. Okay, now what? Um, you add the 5 for 2.6 Good. 4, imagine this is all one big 2.6, and then 5, add it all together, gives your equivalent resistance to be? 11.6 Now, if this had been 12.0 volts and 4.00 ohms and all throughout, if I put three sig figs everywhere, we would round our answer. We wouldn't use the rounded answer, but I would round the answer for sake of quizzing and testing to what? 11.7. 11.7 ohms. But in all my calculations, I'm going to base it off of 11.6 repeating. How many got the 11.7 or 11.6 repeating ohms? So we're all good on the first step. The second thing we always find, Audrey, the total current. How much current is in this thing all together? How do I find current? Um, v over R. I equals V over R. Ohm's law V equals IR, so I equals V over R. We're looking at the voltage that the battery provides divided by the equivalent resistance tells us the total current that we're able to get out of this circuit. And uh, when we divide, it's not going to be much. Right? I mean, we got 12 volts. We have almost 12 ohms. So it's going to be just barely over uh, a single amp. What did you get for your answer, Audrey? Um, one .02. Rounded 1.0. Well, it's 1.028 blah, blah, blah amps. If we had happened to have, let's just say, three sig figs, we'd say 1.03 amps. But we would use this number in our calculations. I'm going to put that in my memory. You may have done that last night as well. Um, so uh, there's our current. Once we've got these two big, by the way, did we all get the 1.028 blah, blah, blah? Okay. Once we've got that, then comes the chart. We list out our resistances pretty much in order as they appear for the current based on conventional current, the current that goes through each, and the IR drop or the voltage used at each resistance. Going in order, the first resistor that's encountered is 4 ohms. The next ones are a 1 ohm and a 3 ohm, and they're together. The 2 ohm and 6 ohm are also together, and their togethernesses are together. We have last a little 5 ohm resistance that has nothing to do with anybody else. All right, so there's our chart. The two that I should get first are which two, Michael? Uh, four the four and five, because they're standalone resistances. At the moment the current is going here, there is nowhere else it can be. When the current's going here, there's nowhere else it can be. So I know current is constant for series resistors. What's the current through those two guys? 1.03 It's the 1.03 amps. I think we'll just stay consistent with the three sig figs for rounding purposes. But I'm not going to actually use 1.03 on the calculator. I'm going to use the memory value to find the IR drop. And IR drop is as simple as multiplying I times R. So we multiply it by the 4, and what was the voltage used here? I rounded it to 4.1. Okay, I'm going to say 4.11 volts, that's fine. And then, um, what do we get here? I rounded it to 5.1. 5.1, I'll say 5.14 volts. Again, we really weren't sure what the sig fix were supposed to be, so no problem there. Again, quizzes and tests, it'll be clear. Um, did we get these numbers, ladies? Okay, roughly rounded to whatever you rounded. Okay, so the problem was not the series resistors, and I didn't think it would be. The question is the parallel. And that's why I spent so much time hitting parallel yesterday, and we're going to spend a lot of time hitting parallel today. Start by looking at the whole parallel set. Let me zoom in just a little bit more here. All right, we're going to look at the whole parallel set. What do I know? It's already labeled on my, on my schematic. What do I already know about the whole parallel set, class? 2.6. There are 2.6 ohms of resistance. What else do I know about the whole parallel set? The whole thing gets 1.03 amps. Now, it goes both pathways, right? But like if the school has 170 kids and there's two exits, what do I know? Assuming everybody gets out alive, 170 kids are going out those two exits, right? I don't know how many through each, but I know the total's 170. The total of this whole two hallway system is 1.028 blah, blah, blah amps. Got it? And if I know the resistance of the whole thing and the current of the 
whole thing, then I should be able to find the voltage of the whole thing. So there's my resistance, there's my current, therefore, what is the voltage of the whole thing? Oh. 2.742. 2.742. I'm going to put this in memory too. Volts. Store two. All right. Did we get that number? Did we write it somewhere on the schematic perhaps? I like to put it right here where my whole number is. I like to put those all together so I can see it. Now, here's the important thing to remember. Make sure this is in your notes somewhere. Once you know the voltage of the whole thing, this is the voltage through each branch. The voltage of the whole thing is the voltage through each branch because in a parallel circuit, voltage is constant. So if the whole parallel uses 2.742 volts, each branch, actually I'm gonna go yellow here so that way we can, because I used yellow to mark the branches earlier, we know each branch is getting 2.742 volts. Does that make sense? And we're going to shift our focus now from the whole thing to each branch. So I'm going to focus just on this first branch. I know 2.742 volts. What else do I know about just this branch class? Four ohms. All right, that's the resistance. This is the voltage. If I know resistance and voltage, I should be able to find current, right? Current in amperes. All right, so how do I find I? V over R. Now in this case, it's not I total, and it's not V battery, and it's not REQ, but it still I equals V over R. I have on my calculator still 2.7428 blah, blah, blah volts. I can divide that by four ohms of resistance. How much current goes into this branch? Ooh, careful dividing the other way around. V divided by R. We're getting 0.6857 blah, blah, blah amps. I'm going to put that in memory three. Sto three. Now look at the next branch. I know this branch, we said, gets 2.742 blah, blah, blah volts, right? What else do I know about this branch? Eight ohms. That's voltage, that's resistance. If I know voltage and I know resistance, I can find current, V over R. How much current goes through this second branch? 0.3482 blah 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 amps. All right, so we started by looking at the whole thing. The whole thing has 2.6 repeating ohms. The whole thing gets the 1.028 blah 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 amps. So the whole thing uses up 2.742 blah 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 volts. That's the voltage through each branch. And if I know the voltage in each branch and the resistance in each branch, I get the current in each branch. We shifted our focus from whole thing to branch. Now we need to shift our focus from branch to the individual resistances, the individual loads. Keep going smaller, right, with the stacking dolls. This resistance right here is one ohm. How much current has to go across this resistance class? So just like I told you, the voltage of the whole thing is the voltage in each branch. The current in each branch is the current through each resistor in the branch. Does that make sense? So I know there are 0.6857 blah, blah, blah amps going across here. There's also the same 0.6857 blah, blah, blah amps going across here. Does that make sense? How, much, how many amps of current go across the 2 ohm resistor? 0.3482 blah 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 amps. How much goes across the 6 ohm resistor? 0.3482 blah 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 amps, right? Because once 0.3482 blah 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 amps have chosen to go this way, they all have to go across those resistors. Does that make sense? So therefore, I can go ahead and fill in the current. I can say that 0.686 amps here, 0.686 amps here. I can say 0.348 amps here and 0.348 amps here. Does that make sense? Now, 
How do I get the IR drop? You just multiply. Now, I actually still have on my calculator the 0 0.3428 blah, blah, blah. I ran out of memories. Remember, I've already used three of them. I could overwrite memory one with this number if I wanted to. I'm lazy. I've still got it on the calculator. And what I can do is I can say times two to get this number right here. And we should get 0.686 volts. Now, these numbers work out where I could change just multiply by three to go from two ohms to six. I can divide the two back out, now I got the number I had a minute ago, and multiply by six. How much voltage gets used up at the six ohm resistance? 2.06 volts if we round. This number is actually in the memory. But do I really need the memory to multiply by one ohm? Eh, 0.686 volts. But it would be nice to use recall three to multiply by three ohms. And how much voltage is used up at the three ohm resistance? Incidentally, 2.06 volts is like, whoa, that's weird. Well, each of these resistances is twice as big. And so because there's twice as much resistance, there's half as much current. Half as much current times twice as much resistance equals the same voltage. So that's why the numbers happen to mirror each other here. That's not going to be the case in every problem. It just happened to be the case here. Questions on this? All right. Before we practice this more, we're going to take a quiz, but none of this is going to be on the quiz. We are going to practice, have to quiz you over finding equivalent resistance, but you should be really good with that now. I want to make sure we're good on the differences between series and parallel. Go ahead and clear your desks, except for a clean sheet of paper, pencil, calculator. Clean sheet of paper, pencil, calculator. Later on in the week, we'll take a quiz that has the whole circuit stuff on it, but this one's not that, okay? This isn't solving the whole network or anything like that. I just want to make sure via quiz that we've got equivalent resistance down. Instead at this point, I believe we should. First, I'll name at the top of your paper along with today's date, which is 5, 10, 23. 5, 10, 23, today's date. Five ten twenty three. Today's date. This is quiz. Actually, I don't remember. Twenty eight. Quiz twenty eight. All right. Numbers one through eight. You got a fifty fifty chance, and it's not true or false. It's series or parallel. I've described something to you. You tell me. Am I talking about series or parallel? Seem pretty straightforward. Just write the whole word series, the whole word parallel. Oh, um, don't misspell it. All right, and then for number nine and number 10, find the equivalent resistance that's in each network. All right, we're going to end the video here. We'll come back after the quiz.